So I wanted to record an EP. At least that was the plan. But I can't remember the last time things went according to the plan. So I ended up with one album, which is one song. And it's like more than one hour long. And I don't know what was wrong. You know, I started with um, going through my library of ideas. And it's like a Cubist project that has um, all this nonsense is that I record whenever, whenever I think I have a good idea while I'm practicing, I say, yeah, I record it. Then later it's very disappointing, of course. And um, yeah, there was this one thing that was jumping out as I was uh, listening through it all and I trying to figure out what to do with it, which pieces to choose. And uh, this one was like, boom, it was like already sh shaped. And that's quite, you know, unusual. Usually you have to make it sound. This one already like had its sound. Um, so I went into it deeply and um, I f first I needed to figure out uh, how I was playing that actually. And uh, it was nice because it was a bit more relaxed way of playing than what I used in the past years. And uh, that was a big relief for my face, which suffered many inner bruises from high intensity playing. But still, you know, to make it work, um, you have to put it deeply into muscle memory and optimize the movements so that you can withstand half an hour or one hour of playing of it. And so th those were the first months. I think I started in November or December 2018. And um, yeah, I was focusing on that, you know, I, I didn't play anything else. I, my, my drone was actually surprisingly bad when I um, finished the album and started to prepare, you know, for the concert season. I was surprised how much my drone was uh, gone, but I didn't play a drone for months. But it came back so very quickly. Um, so after I got this deeply into muscle memory, I um, had to figure out a way to record it. And I wanted to do it uh, with one mic for the ditch only and one for the nose. And uh, after some research, I realized I have to borrow a mic, which is an old mic. It's the AKG C12A and the Nixio has it. It's now very expensive. And uh, he told me that I have to, you know, deal with it only in white gloves. It's like this Rolls Royce from 17th century, you know, if, if the doors don't fall off when you open it, you will have a tremendous ride. And uh, yeah, so I was limited a little bit with time. Usually when I have my mics, it's, I, I record in my studio at home. So, you know, I have all the time in the world to do it. But this time I didn't, and actually it was quite good because I had to return the mic. Mm, at first I thought that I, I would be able to play like one and a half hour through. And I could, but the quality of my sound was dropping off. So I had to make a few breaks. And then I put it all together. And the idea was also to have this um, uh, line in the foreground, which is this rhythm, which is usually background, and that it changes as little as possible, whereas the background is melodic, which is not usually the case, and it's changing more. Not huge amounts, but still more than the, the rhythmic section. And it was kind of this bolero repetition, but I wanted to find out how much can the context of a background interfere with the perception of the foreground of the didgeridoo playing? And it turns out quite a lot, you know, um, more than one would say. So it was a good experiment. So after recording myself, I recorded Or Mary and Nixho, uh, who gave their parts and then I had to put it all together, you know, 
mix it, edit it, find the spaces in which it exists, and atmosphere. Um, I had this, one day I had this complete failure. Well, that day it seemed like a success. I wanted to record this kind of introduction, this bells uh, on a mountain temple, you know, this beautiful um, atmosphere that just relaxes your mind and soul and you then you dive deep into it. And I was working on it the whole day and the next day I realized I, I recorded like a horror movie soundtrack. It's, it was incredibly terrible. So it, that had to go. And so the last bit was, of course, to persuade Lonitz to do his part, which he did, fortunately. And uh, the album was completed and now it's here. And it took like half a year, but you can get it very quickly. It exists in online as download and as a hard copy. And uh, if you want to support my work, not just the ditch playing, but everything I put out, that's a wonderful way to show your support. And I don't sell huge uh, quantities, so every single uh, copy uh, that is sold is appreciated. Anyway, I hope that you can see that I go through things the same way as you do. Nothing comes really easy. I mean, some things do, but to have a finished product, that doesn't. And it's always digging. And next time you will find yourself in some adversities, in uh, the struggles of digging in and diving out, remember that it's part of the game. And I hope you enjoy the album. Spiral out and keep blowing. <laughs>